Konnichiwa, ninjas, and thank you so much for joining us here today. I have with me the lovely, amazing, and talented Lily of Lilitron Cosplay and King of the Nerds. How you doing today? I'm doing really well. Um, I have never been to Enchanted Grounds, but I've wanted to come for a long time, and it's kind of like heaven. So there. It really is like a little slice of heaven in here. We got we got coffee, we got games, we got lots and lots of nerds. It's, it's pastries, it, it's comics, comic books. It's pure heaven. It's really great. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait for them to build one in Denver. Cool. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, about about your craft, and what the heck it's like to be on King of the Nerds. Yeah. So um, I grew up in a costume shop in Baltimore, Maryland. It's called Rutledge Costume, um, and my mom started it. So I've been around costumes my whole life. I've been sewing forever. And when I started, I, I've been doing nerdy things a lot longer than I've been doing costumes. And when I started discovering the cosplay community, I was like, this is for me. This is absolutely for me. And then I just kind of jumped into it. And I've, I really love it, so. <laughs> and you've won some awards as a cosplayer, right? Yeah, I have. So um, I... Well, a few costumes that I made for my brother and sister won in children's categories at Starfest, but I've never won anything at Starfest yet. Um, however, at Mile High Con, which you might be familiar with, um, just, just, just a tiny bit, um, me and my brother and my sister and my boyfriend all did four reincarnations of the Avatar from Avatar The Last Airbender. Ooh. Yeah, it was really exciting. Um, I was Avatar Kyoshi, my brother was Aang, my sister was Korra, and uh, my boyfriend was Roku. And we came on stage and we um, did some martial arts on, because, you know, there martial are some martial arts. Stuff. stuff. Yeah, um, <laughs> because all of the bending styles are based on different martial arts, um, like water bending is Tai Chi and things like that. So uh, yeah, we came on stage and we did that and we bent elements and uh, we won best in show. A little bit of Matrix stuff going on. Yeah, it was fantastic. And we won best in show, which was completely unexpected. And um, so that was like my first big win. And then this last summer at Denver Comic Con, I came as Black Lantern Wonder Woman. Um, yeah. Solid. It was great. And uh, the it, it lit up. Um, in the crown, there were LEDs that made my eyes glow white and um, black light LEDs. Yeah, so anyway, I won first place in performance in the intermediate category, so I was really proud of that. Wow, that's, yeah. that, that's, that's, so, uh, that's so amazing. And Denver Comic Con is such an amazing, huge show. Um, it's going into its fourth year uh, yeah. this year, and uh, I've been to every one of those, so that's, that's a big show to win. Yeah. yeah, it was a big show. I was completely surprised by it. I mean, I thought that I did a good job and that I really worked hard on my costume. I didn't even know that you could apply to be judged on um, craft, like creation of it. Um, so I didn't even know that that was something I could enter into. So they pulled all the people who were getting judged for the craft of their costumes, which mine was pretty well made. Um, and I was like, oh man, I didn't know. Oh, now I'm not going to win anything. So I won not, not based on like just craft but on everything so I, I had even an even slimmer chance of winning anything because I didn't apply for that category and I still won first place in performance so that was fantastic I just came on stage and I was a super zombie it was great <laughs> wow that's amazing you are um, speaking of cosplay um, you are very well known for um, your uh, Cersei uh, cosplay and um, uh, Game of Thrones is almost almost here um, tell me a little bit about uh, what inspired that particular cosplay yeah so um, I, I I have to admit I saw the first season of the show before I started reading the books but then I was like I'm yeah that's it's fine it's fine <laughs> you can do things in whatever order you want um, but I saw the first season, I was like, this story is fantastic. And I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I love fantasy. And I jumped into the books, um, A Song of Ice and Fire. And I was just, I was hooked. I was like, this is the universe for me. And I just read them all super, super quick. Um, I actually read like two of them when I was in Nepal one summer. I was just like, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> um, tea, read, tea, read. Um, so yeah, I love the series, and Cersei, I love Cersei. I, I would also do a Daenerys cosplay, 
Um, but she is done a lot. Um, yes. If I did a Daenerys cosplay, it would probably be Dothraki Daenerys eating a gelatin heart. So that would be really cool. <laughs> but um, I was just so drawn to Cersei, and I love her character so much. I know when, when you first say that, people go, what are you talking about? You love Cersei. Well, I'll tell you why I love Cersei. Damn right. I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> she is so ahead of her time. She is in this situation where she has been married off into a loveless marriage, right? And that's like all she's good for, right? And she's constantly telling her father, I am so much more than a brood mare. I'm not just for popping out babies. Yep. Like, I could rule. If you let me have Casterly Rock, I would do so much good with Man. that. And nobody will listen to her because she's a woman. And in those times, like, no, nah, you can't, right? So she's just always grown up seeing her brother Jamie do all of these things that she wishes she could do. She wishes that she could, you know, get the same training as Jamie. She wishes that she could rule the same things as Jamie and make the big decisions like Jamie and be in charge of Casterly Rock like Jamie would. Um, and nobody will let her. So what she does is she makes the most of her position. Now, I argue that Catelyn Stark would make all the same decisions as Cersei Lannister if her family was put in that same position. In that position, yeah. she absolutely would. She was, you know, she she was smart. She married you know, married the right guy who was in power at the time. You know, all that stuff. She pulled all those plays, and you know, she's just both ladies are doing what they can to survive in this brutal, brutal period. Yeah, and take care of their families because Cer the, I think the biggest redeeming quality that everyone sees in Cersei is how much she loves her children, and she will do absolutely anything for her children. The fact that she is doing things with her brother, I don't necessarily condone incest, but she <laughs> is in a loveless situation where, right. with her husband, Robert, who is just constantly, not he's not even hiding that he has affairs with everything that moves, right? And so it's uh, he's constantly disrespecting her, and of course, I mean, I would be spiteful. I, oh yeah, absolutely. I, I'm t you know what? Because, I mean, she was behind his death. I think that's fine. Good for her. Spoilers! Is that? That's like first book. It, 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 <laughs> it depends on how far you are. So, so sorry to anybody if that was if that's spoilers. But you know what? You should have should have caught up by now. You should have done it. In the show? <laughs> I feel like that's in the show, too. Speaking of the show, season five is coming out. I will not be watching. It's already ruined things for the book readers. Whoa. Just in the trailers. Wow. Mm -hmm. no, no kidding. So, yeah. so season five is no go for you at all. I know at least five other people who are not going to be watching season five. Wow. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I have to. Show. I have to. It is, it is my love in life is Game of Thrones. So. Yeah. Well, they're messing with things they ought not be meddling in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So King of the Nerds. So. So episode three just aired last night. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's it like? Uh, first off, uh, living under the rule of um, <clears throat> Marv, if you will. <laughs> um, well, in all honesty, Curtis Armstrong is probably one of the nicest, like <laughs> nicest people I have ever met. Um, he, he's incredible. I mean, he really takes all of us on as family. And I, I just, he, he and his wife opened up their home to us for the premiere and everything. Um, every time you call him for any sort of affirmation, he makes you feel like a million bucks. Um, he's one of the kindest men I've ever met in my life. So <laughs> Curtis Armstrong is not just Metatron, everyone. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I can tell I can tell he's a totally awesome dude. Just yeah. like he's genuine, he's real. I mean, just the way he acts, he loves what he does. Yeah. You know, just uh I'm a huge supernatural buff. That's yeah. like one of my favorite shows of all time. <laughs> so, uh yeah, just I I'm I'm aware of your hijinks, so don't pull anything. Sam and Dean are watching. <laughs> yeah, no, and the amount that he cares about the show is really incredible. Like that show is his baby, King of the Nerds, obviously. So, um that answers the question being under his rule. But uh, <laughs> being on the show, oh my goodness, it's surreal. It is yeah. a surreal experience. Yeah. It's, I don't even know how to describe it really. I, when I came back, I told everybody the same thing. I said, it was, while it was one of the best experiences of my life, it was also the most stressful experience I've had so sure. far in my life. Um, 
people who haven't been on a reality TV show do not understand and maybe never will. Um, but it is, I mean, you have to be on 24 yeah. seven. You have no downtime. You have no slip time. Right. You have to be a social machine 24 seven. Well, Cause the camera's on, the camera's on like all the time, right? Yeah. Like whether you're sleeping or eating dinner or chatting or competing. I will put it this way. We are always watched. We are always watched 24 seven and um, my goodness, when you're interacting with people, you have to be constantly positive and constantly making your point and constantly like in negotiations with people because one thing, I mean, if you're in a room alone, there are probably two conversations going on about you. Right. So you have to constantly be the most social person at the moment and get all the inside jokes and you know be everyone's best friend at once so it's right. really a big social game and i think that is the hardest part of it it's like it's like game of thrones honestly <laughs> <laughs> it's really it's like being in king's landing right. it's super stressful right. it really is like nerdvana is like king's landing there's lots of cool stuff and lots of great food but you have to be making alliances and being polite and doing all of these things um you know and when people get eliminated, it's a little bit like they're dying, which is really sad. <laughs> it, no, and it feels that way. You, you almost take it so seriously when something happens, which is why I think some people have reacted to things in the way that they have is because it, it feels like you're being take, like ripped from a situation that you were trying so hard to stay and right. it feels like a huge loss. So. I think in r retrospect, it's not as serious as we felt there, which is why it's so nice to be able to talk to nerds from previous seasons as well. We're like this ever-growing family, right. and they get it. They get it. No <laughs> one else gets it. They get it. And so it's, it's just really nice having that support group of all of the other nerds, too. That's, that's fantastic. So speaking of um, alliances and stuff like that, so, so this whole uh, Secret Six uh -huh. thing... Um, what's, I, I, I know we can't know everything about that just yet, but, uh, oh, how did that come about? What can you tell us about, about the secret six? Yeah. So when I was talking about it for the longest time, I was calling it the final six because it was a Battlestar Galactica reference. And I was really mad that it turned into the secret six. Boo. Oh, well, um, <laughs> they wanted the alliteration, I guess, but yeah. So the secret six happened because... Um, I was in an alliance with Ben. Ben was in an alliance with Amanda. Rachel, Heather, Amanda, and I were in an alliance. Heather was in an alliance with Amanda and Jonathan. So really, it was just kind of like, hey, I don't want to be eliminated. Right. Could you not eliminate me? That would be swell. Thank you. And then, like those talks just started happening. I was like, well, I kind of have an alliance with this person. Can we bring this person in on it too? Yeah, sure, sure. I think this is good. And it could have very well been the final four, right? It could have, right. it could have been the, um, it could have been just two, two alliances from either side coming together to be four people, but it ended up just being six. It looks so much more like we're really <laughs> conspiring, but really it was just us having separate alliances that kind of melded together into this big one. Well, well, that's kind of like like almost a survivor strategy, yes. you know? Uh, and and I, I actually have to confess to really loving Survivor <laughs> a lot. That's one of my guilty pleasures. I love the heck out of that show. It's just so intriguing. It's like, who's going to betray who and like all this stuff? It's, it's Again, it's kind of like Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, yeah, it is like Game of Thrones. And uh, I think that you would really like Amanda. She is on the show. Um, and Amanda is a huge Survivor fan. So the inter-team alliance, I would say, I mean, it's a lot her idea. I think um, Heather had a lot to do with it too. But um, Amanda went on to the show saying in her mind, I am going to have an inter-team alliance because she loves Survivor so much and she understands how the game is played. I mean, because you have to get to the end, even if you have to, you have to stab somebody in the back at some point because yeah. you're trying to win, mm -hmm. but you're going to get a lot further, I think, with that alliance. Yes, you are going to get a lot farther with the Alliance. When you have the Alliance, there's this feeling of safety that even when you lose, there's this net you can fall back on where you know that you're not going home. So it's, it's a lot less ulcer-inducing when, <laughs> when you have that uh, inner team Alliance. So yeah, 
it, it made things a lot nicer for those who were in it. What was your favorite event that you've participated in, um, at least through last night's episode? Through last night's episode, um, the Rube Goldberg machine was really fun to make. I used, I grew up making those with my dad, so I was really into making that Cup City forever. Um, so I really loved making Cup City. I loved improvising as Pepper London and the Clockwork King with Todd, um, and I got to be Pepper London ace reporter and. Um, that was just really fun. I love acting, so it was um, that was a really fun experience. I think the next nerd war with cosplay. I really loved performing that with my team because yeah. I have I have just a big place in my heart for House Hulavu. Um, I love my despite Secret Six House Hulavu. I think always had like my top alliance because obviously in a nerd war we want to win. So House Hulavu always had my supreme support and then comes the secret six right. so but um the cosplay challenge challenge was really fun to do with everyone and um even though we lost it's still a positive memory i sewed for 12 hours straight oh my god yeah. 12, 12 hours, hours straight and I, did, I mean did you get like the claw going no, <laughs> or I think i've done it I've, i think i've sewn longer than 12 hours honestly in my wow. life i remember uh one star fest i pulled two all-nighters i sewed all day stayed up all night stayed up all day stayed up all night wow in the hotel room with a sewing machine that, that's such dedication <laughs> like you know like everybody out there knows i i love cosplayers I, I love what you guys do and and just the expertise and work and time it takes to get that going i i just it's it's like the reason i keep coming back to conventions myself it yeah. really is one one star fest i came to a convention and someone said do they do they pay you to be here and i was like no and they <laughs> said well they should because you, like you guys are the reason that we keep coming and that was like eight years ago someone right. said that to me that's before it's even mainstream yeah, yeah, it was, it was, I was uh, Barbarella that year, Jane Fonda's nice. Barbarella. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Um, um, speaking of cosplayers, I think you want, met uh, one very special cosplayer in particular on King of the Nerds. Uh, oh my God, I, I, I need to meet her someday. Yaya Han, um, one of the, uh, if not the most, <laughs> premier cosplayers in the world, and she's on this show. What was it like to meet her? Um, I think we all knew that she was going to be on the show because she's been on the past two seasons as a cosplay judge. So um, before I left for the show, I saw that she was working on her retro space girl costume. So if you'll notice in the cosplay challenge, I was dressed as a retro space girl with a retro blaster and everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I was really excited to meet her because I, I, I've been following her for years yeah. and um, I, I was really hoping that she would really like my costume. And um, yeah, <laughs> I was really hoping she would like my costume. I was freaking out as I was sewing and uh, Rachelle kept telling me, Lily, calm down. Yaya Han is not going to check your seams, which is something that she does on shows. You know, she'll right. like look at your seams and see how it's constructed and everything. Guess what? <laughs> We're on stage, they come up on stage um, to examine our costumes, and she comes up and checks all of my seams. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm so sorry. At one point, the sewing machine broke and I had to staple it, I'm sorry. You know, it, except I didn't get to say that, it was just in my head. Um, I think I did yell at her. We, we weren't supposed to talk to them, but I was like, all handmade. <laughs> like, didn't want to get in trouble, right? Right. Um, my favorite memory from that, though, was uh, Billy Boyd. So I'm a really big Lord of the Rings fan. I have a gold oh. ring on my finger that has Tengwar script inside of it, which wow. is Sindarin, which is Elvish. Oh, my God. And I had it custom made, and I love, I love Lord of the Rings. So anyway, <laughs> Billy Boyd was there, and I almost screamed. I did scream. <laughs> um, and he came on and was looking at our costumes too, not supposed to talk to them. And I just go, Alencia Lumene no Mencielvo. And he was like, yeah, what's that then? <laughs> and I was like, it means a star shines upon the hour of our meeting in Elvish. And he was like, oh, very good then. <laughs> and I was just oh, like, oh yes. Ah. Winning. He's forgotten all about me, I'm sure. <laughs> I doubt that. 
Oh, that's yeah. that, that, that's cute. So so big big fan of him. Yeah, big fan of him. Big big fan of Tara Strong. I mean, if like dream cosplay that I'll probably never do, honestly. Um, I've always wanted to do Harley Quinn. Like I loved her in the show. Um, and so Tara Strong was the voice of Harley Quinn, yeah. and I just wanted her to be like, "Hi, hey, Puddin," and it would have been great, <laughs> but she didn't. Oh well. Um, Anyway, I'll never do Harley Quinn because I won't do her until I can do a backflip. So that's, that's that's a lofty life goal. I know, being able to do a backflip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I tried that in gymnastics in high school, and I just I just. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can't even do a handstand. I can't even do a cartwheel. <laughs> I can't even touch my toes. Backflip's not gonna happen. Harley Quinn's not gonna happen. Tear. Boo. Yeah. So. A certain holiday that many of us fear is coming right up. Oh. The dreaded Valentine's Day. Yeah. That's so. when you put flames. <laughs> uh, it goes like this when you say that. Yep. Flames from the top and bottom. If you could recommend the guys out there what to get their geeky ladies. That's like in the doable category of some, in some way. Uh, for Valentine's Day, what would be your top recommendation? I actually think that nerdy girls are a lot easier to get presents for than not nerdy girls because girls who aren't nerdy, it's like, well, do they want flowers? Do they want chocolate? I don't know, man. Nerdy girls, like, what is she into? Is she into board games? Go buy her an expansion to her favorite board game. Is she into comics? Go buy the next issue. Is she, like, you know, it's a lot easier. So, I mean, if you're going to buy a present for me for Valentine's Day, I would want the uh, Blue Sun expansion to the Firefly game. Ooh. Hint, hint. Um, <laughs> because you get an expansion to the playing board and you actually get Shadow, which is where Malcolm Reynolds is from, and you get Miranda and extra reaver space. So that's what I want. Um, but also, I mean, you could buy me the expansions to Resistance or the expansions to Coup, or you could buy me Descent because it's out of print right now. Um, the base game, and I really want to play it again. Is it really that's out of print? Uh, yeah, that's what they told me at the game store the other day. Oh, sad. That was it. Sad. Uh, black and red. Ah, they told me that. Love black and red. I do too. Shout out. Shout out black, black and red. And red. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, because I'm into comics, like, or if 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 your lady's into comics, you could buy <laughs> her the new Rat Queens. You could buy her um, trade backs of Saga. You could. Uh, <laughs> there's this. I mean. It, it's a lot easier when someone has a fandom. But what if you run into that time where you literally feel like that person kind of has all that stuff? Because I know for me, like, if I'm going to spend money on something, it's going to be in a place like this. And so so for, for my lady to come to me and be like, like, hmm, you know, he might not have, like, like the squad of Marines that comes with, like, a melt-a-gun or something, you know, that might be a little more difficult. What's your recommendation for, like, a geeky girl that kind of has, like, a lot of stuff. I'm gonna tell you the best present I ever made as a present for someone. Are you ready? I wish I, I had brought them. <laughs> so, because it's an example, like if you think they have everything, well, custom make something because everyone loves handmade things. So, um, uh, my boyfriend Mark and I were very, very into hero clicks about a year ago and we would do tournaments and everything. So for our three year anniversary that year, um, I had custom made hero clicks for him. So um, we used um, figurines from other hero clicks and I had a friend of mine um, paint them for me and I custom made dials and cards and a friend of mine helped me Photoshop the cards and I had got like the perfect card Aww. stock for them and they had like the curved edges. I wish I had brought them because they are so cool looking. Um, but it has us in our normal forms. So like Bruce Banner, right? And then right. our super forms like the Hulk, right? So it like it's us, and then we can evolve into our super forms, and they have different clicks and different abilities, and every ability is like an inside joke. So um, <laughs> one of mine, I don't know if you're familiar with hero clicks, but one of the powers yeah. is perplex, right? So I love puns. So in mine, it says, "How do you confuse a cat?" Perplex, and that's <laughs> really great. Um, because in Hero Clicks, each ability has something that's special to the character. Right. Like Hulk's might say, like Hulk Smash for super strength or something, right? Um, so they were custom for 
each of us, and they're really cool. I'll post a picture of them because they're so cool. That, that is so sweet. I think I would absolutely melt. So, so if you guys have no good ideas for your geeky SO make out there, something. make something. Make something. Or, I mean, food is good. Food always wins, right? Food wins. I mean, unless you have... Unless you're dating a girl who doesn't like food, in which case you should probably just break up with her. They're a Cylon. Yeah. They're toasters. <laughs> <laughs> no good. Um, yeah, food is food always wins. Food is the special place in my heart. If you take me out for food, I'll be really happy. <laughs> There you have it. Valentine's Day advice straight from Lily. So as for your cosplay, um, I noticed that there's a little bit of a theme mm -hmm. to your cosplay. They all seem to be badass, strong, awesome ladies. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I think this is why cosplay has stuck with me for so long, is that um, throughout my life, I didn't used to be this cool. Um, <laughs> I None of us did. Yeah. Um, if, if you feel like in your life right now, you're like, I don't like who I am. Just wait. Just make the effort to become the person that you want to be because it took me a while to feel this confident in life. And I think that cosplay has really done that for me. So if you're ever questioning, like, is cosplay for me? It is for you because anyone can cosplay and... Um, it could actually really help your self-confidence. So my personal story is that I was very awkward. I don't think I ever washed my hair. Um, I would like, I was, I was a very, very weird, awkward oh. little lady. <laughs> and um, when I started cosplaying, it was like all of a sudden I became that character. So um, I started off with um, like Sally Jupiter from Watchmen and then Barbarella because it was like, oh, so this is what I do. I'm like, I'm like pretty strong, right? Like right. That's, that's what people want to see. And then the biggest shift in my cosplay was when I did a ghost from StarCraft II, Wings of Liberty. Ooh. So yeah, I know. And it was kind of more based on Kerrigan's jumpsuit, but I'm blonde, so I was Nova. Um, but when I put that costume on, I felt like Nova. Yeah. I felt like no one can say anything to me. And whenever anyone like interviewed me or took pictures of me, I was just dead face. Bam. I was like, you cannot even touch this. Nuclear I am launch no detected. That is literally my ringtone. Is it really? When you text me, my phone <laughs> goes nuclear launch detected and everyone hates it because I've had it for like five years now. Um, <laughs> maybe four. Um, so Nova is, act, I mean, go, the ghost character is a, a huge part of my identity. It's, you know, it's my message tone. Um, and it was the cosplay that really turned things around for me. So I feel like every time I do a cosplay, I'm channeling that character. And whenever I come to a problem in life, I find myself channeling those characters. So after... After doing Nova, I did a Diablo monk. So I was Ooh. like, yeah, right? Like, I can take this. And then after that, I did, um, well, I've done like a Twi'lek Padawan. Um, I've done, uh, well, I did Cersei Lannister. And when I'm Cersei, I'm like, <laughs> don't even, you know? And when I, which is so funny because in all those promo videos of me for King of the Nerds, I'm, I just look like I'm going to rip your <laughs> face off, which is not me at all. <laughs> but I love being able to slip into that character and feeling that strength. And Black Lantern Wonder Woman, I was like, I will rip your heart out. You know, it, it just, I love playing these strong women because maybe it's a self-reflection of who I wish I was more like because these women advocate for themselves yeah. and these women don't let anyone talk down to them and they don't take anything <laughs> from anybody they don't. ever they don't and you know these are the masks that I wear are these costumes and so uh, if you saw last night's episode of King of the Nerds um, episode three the gods are angry um, Todd made a mistake and he was really feeling the pressure of being on the show and he lashed out at me. And in that moment, I remember just the biggest thing going through my head was, don't cry. Wonder Woman wouldn't cry. Yeah. Cersei wouldn't cry. Nova wouldn't cry. 
be those women, like be them. And so I was, and I, I, I even, I was like, just channel Wonder Woman, channel Wonder Woman whenever you can. Amanda channels Catwoman whenever she can. I channel Wonder Woman whenever I can. Um, you're like, you'll see me stand like this all the time. And that, if you just once a day stand like Wonder Woman, the rest of your day is going to be so much stronger and better. <laughs> do, do you think I should stand like Wonder Woman once a day? I think you should. I think you should stand like Wonder Woman at all times. Doesn't that just feel like you're... That feels special? really natural. That's like the special place. Yeah. Right there. Uh-huh. And I'm a teacher, and sometimes I have my students like, all right, ladies, I want you to walk through the hall. Show me your Wonder Woman stance. And they walk through the halls like this, and I'm so proud of them. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. God. Yeah. It, it, seriously, is there anything you don't do? You're, you're a teacher, cosplayer, gamer, geek, nerd. You're on TV. I mean, man, you, you're but just... I didn't always used to be this cool. <laughs> it, it, was like a, it was like a battle of believing in myself and being positive and just trying Like my biggest advice to anyone out there who's having a hard time in their life is just, you know, make an effort every day to do something positive for yourself. And you just have to believe in yourself and challenge yourself every day with something new. I never thought that I would get on the show. I was just like, "Ah, all right, I'll try, you know? And then it happened. And I didn't think I was gonna win first place at Denver Comic Con. Oh, it happened. And it was just because I put my all into it every single time. That's fantastic. Absolutely inspiring. You know, just, just, just give it a shot, guys. Like, like, you know, if you're scared or whatever, trust me, we all are. Every single one of us, whether it's cosplay, whether it's, it's talking to Lilitron cosplay, you know, I mean, people get scared about stuff, you know, but you just got to give it a try and you have fun. Give it a try because if you don't try, there's nothing. Mm-hmm. There, you never tried. No try, <laughs> only do. Go try. And I mean, there are people... If, if, if cosplaying makes you feel uncomfortable, like if, if you are wearing a cosplay that makes you physically feel uncomfortable, maybe you feel like you should be more modest, change the costume, make it so that you feel more comfortable yeah. in it. You know, you, it's your version of the character. It's how you choose to portray the character. So there is absolutely no costume that is off limits to anyone as long as they feel comfortable in it. So as long as you feel comfortable in what you're wearing, don't let anyone tell you to change. Fantastic advice. All right. So last thing here. Um, <clears throat> do you uh, take first place in King of the Nerds? <laughs> You'll have to watch and find out. <laughs> oh, I had to give it a shot. Cool. Thank you so very much, guys. Lilitron Cosplay. I'm going to have uh, links to all of her info in the description down below. Uh, be sure to check out her Facebook page. Sh- send her some love. You know, like that. Share it out. Share Instagram, this video. Twitter. I'm on Twitter at Lilitron22. I am on Instagram at Lilitron Cosplay and Facebook slash Lilitron Cos. So there you go. Plugs. <laughs> see, see, see what she did there? Yeah. Oh, more plugs. Uh, King of the Nerds, uh, <laughs> uh, 9-8 Central on TBS. Very funny. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely shameless. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And, um, yeah, guys, uh, really appreciate and love each and every one of you. Remember to respect each other. Remember that we are a geek, guys. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Arigato, we go to Mr.